Hello, I'm Pastor Carl Gallops, and thank you for joining me on another edition of Insight. Those who teach the pre-tribulation rapture face a huge problem when it comes to the history of that doctrine. The fact that the doctrine truly is a rather recent teaching in the Christian church. The pre-trib rapture cannot be prolifically found among the writings contained in the book, The Antinicene Fathers. It's subtitled, The Writings of the Fathers Down to A.D. 325. The Antinicene Fathers is a collection of books in ten volumes, actually nine, one of them is an index volume, but these volumes contain English translations of the majority of early Christian writings. The period covers from the birth of the church until before the formulation of the Nicene Creed at the First Council of Nicaea. Rather, from those writings, the Antinicene Fathers, we discover that the earliest church fathers were mostly post-tribulational in their eschatology. That is also popularly called historic premillennialism. And this fact that the earliest church fathers were mostly post-tribulation and not pre-tribulation often makes pre-trib teachers very uncomfortable indeed. As a result of this historical truth, which I will accurately demonstrate in just a moment, the pre-trib teachers wind up taking one of several different tacks. Firstly, some of them will attempt to discredit the early church fathers altogether and simply say that they were wrong. Others of the pre-trib ilk attempt to make the earliest church fathers to be simply underdeveloped in their doctrinal understandings, or worse, just downright confused. And still other pre-trib teachers flat out distort the truth in order to make it appear as though the early church fathers did teach the doctrine of pre-tribulation. Many of the early pre-trib authors did admit, though, in writing, that the early church did not teach a pre-trib rapture. Some pre-trib authors still truthfully hold to this accurate historical position. An example of this would include Dr. David Reagan of Lamb Lion Ministries. Dr. Reagan is a decidedly and outspoken pre-tribulation teacher and conference leader. Yet in his book, Wrath and Glory, Unveiling the Majestic Book of Revelation, on page 112, he declares, under the heading dealing with the teaching of historic premillennialism, quote, the oldest viewpoint, that is, he's talking about the rapture, the oldest viewpoint of the rapture is called historic premillennialism. In other words, post-tribulation. It is termed historic, he says, for two reasons. Number one, to differentiate it from modern premillennialism, and number two, to indicate that it was the historic position of the early church. And then Dr. Reagan goes on to say, this view is based on a literal interpretation of what the Bible says will happen in the end times. One of its distinctive features is that it places the rapture of the church at the end of the tribulation, combining it with the second coming as one event. And then on page 113 of Dr. Reagan's same book, under the heading of the Church Fathers, he continues, quote, This is the only systematic view of end-time events that existed during the first 300 years of the Church. Justin Martyr, who was born in A.D. 100, he goes on to say, went so far in his writings on the subject as to suggest that anyone with a different viewpoint was heretical. Those today who disagree with this view respond to the near unanimity of the early church fathers by saying they were simply wrong in their interpretation of the prophetic scriptures, end quote. But then Dr. Reagan adds, yet their concept of end-time events should not be dismissed out of hand as crude or primitive, for anyone who has studied the prophetic scriptures will have to admit that the church father's viewpoint presents a plain sense summary of the Bible's teachings about the end times, end quote. Now, in spite of Dr. Reagan's honest and rather candid admission of the historic truth, often modern-day holders of the pre-tribulation rapture view list the following early Christian writers as supposedly believers in the pre-tribulation view. They will list, for example, the epistle of Barnabas, uh, Irenaeus, Hippolytus, who is a disciple of Irenaeus, and Justin Martyr, and the dialogue with Trypho. But is this true? Listen to the following evidence. 
in historical order of appearance, I will take you from the birth of the church to the year 400 A.D., and then you decide. From Barnabas, who knew the disciple John and all 12 of Jesus' disciples, and he traveled with Paul to evangelize among the Gentiles, he wrote, quote, The final stumbling block approaches. For the whole time of your faith will profit you nothing unless now in this wicked time we also withstand coming sources of danger. Then the evil one, speaking of the Antichrist, may find no means of entrance. From the Didache, For in the last days false prophets and corruptors shall be multiplied, and the sheep shall be turned into wolves, and love shall be turned into hate. For when lawlessness increases... They shall hate and persecute and betray one another, and then shall appear the world deceiver as son of God, and shall do signs and wonders, and the earth shall be delivered into his hands, and he shall do iniquitous things which have never yet come to pass since the beginning. Then shall the creation of men come into the fire of trial, and many shall be made to stumble and shall perish. But they that endure in their faith shall be saved from under the curse itself. From Justin Martyr a contemporary of Polycarp, he wrote, The man of apostasy, in other words the Antichrist, who speaks strange things against the Most High, shall venture to do unlawful deeds on the earth against us, the Christians. From the shepherd of Hermas, you will tell, therefore, those who preside over the church to direct their ways in righteousness, that they may receive in full the promises with great glory. Happy ye who endure the great tribulation that is coming on, and happy they who shall not deny their own life. For the Lord hath sworn by his Son that those who denied their Lord hath abandoned their life in despair. For even now these are to deny him in the days that are coming. From Irenaeus, an apostle of Polycarp, and he also knew Justin Martyr, he wrote, and then he points out the time that his Antichrist tyranny shall last, during which the saints shall be put to flight. Irenaeus also writes, In a still clearer light was John, in the Apocalypse, indicated to the Lord's disciples what shall happen in the last times, and concerning the ten kings who shall arise, these have one mind, and give their strength and power to the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, because he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they shall lay Babylon waste, and burn her with fire, and shall give their kingdom to the beast, and put the church to flight. After that, they shall be destroyed by the coming of our Lord. Irenaeus continues, And therefore, when in the end the church shall be suddenly caught up from this, it is said, there shall be tribulation such as not has been seen since the beginning, neither shall be. For this is the last contest of the righteous, in which they overcome, they are crowned with incorruption. Irenaeus writes again, for all these and other words were unquestionably spoken in reference to the resurrection of the just, which takes place after the coming of the Antichrist and the destruction of all nations under his rule, those who have suffered tribulation, as well as escaped the hands of the wicked one. From Hippolytus, a contemporary of Tertullian, he wrote, The one thousand two hundred and threescore days, the last half of the week, during which the tyrant is to reign and persecute the church. Hippolytus continued, Now, concerning the tribulation of the persecution, which is to fall upon the church from the adversary. And then Hippolytus goes on to quote the entire chapter of Revelation chapter 12. From Tertullian, he says, The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, from which shall come their incorruptibility, and these also shall, in the crisis of the last moment, and from their instantaneous death, while encountering the oppressions of Antichrist. Tertullian also writes, The souls of the martyrs are taught to wait, that the beast Antichrist, with his false prophet, may wage war on the church of God. And then there is Cyprian, a contemporary of Hippolytus. He wrote, the day of affliction has begun to hang over our heads, and the end of the world, and the time of the Antichrist to draw near, so that we must all stand prepared for the battle. From Athanasius, he wrote, They have not spared thy servants, but are preparing the way for Antichrist. 
from Ephraim the Syrian, a contemporary of Athanasius. He wrote, Nothing remains then except that the coming of our enemy, Antichrist, appear. From Cyril of Jerusalem, a contemporary of Ephraim the Syrian, he wrote, The church declares to you the things concerning Antichrist before they arrive. It is well that, knowing these things, thou shouldest make thyself, that is the church, be ready beforehand. And then from Jerome, a contemporary of Cyril of Jerusalem, he writes, I told you that Christ would not come unless Antichrist had come before. And may I remind you of what the Apostle Paul himself said years before any of the aforementioned church fathers? Paul, a true church father and one who had been caught up to paradise, as he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, to see the end of all things, he wrote the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy reporter or letter supposedly to have come from us saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. And then Paul says, don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things. Gee, I wonder where all the church fathers I just quoted got their post-tribulation ideas from. Right from the mouth of Paul, right from the mouth of Jesus, right from the mouth of John. You see, I will stand where the church has always stood, by and large, until the neo-pre-tribulation movement started by John Darby and popularized by Schofield began. I will stand with the contextual, clear, unadulterated reading of the Scripture and where it stands. Jesus declared in Luke 17 that the end of times will be just like the days of Noah and just like the days of Lot. Go read those accounts again. There's nothing pre-tribulation about the days of Noah or the days of Lot. Both lived in the midst of great and horrible tribulation. But then they were raptured out right before the wrath of God was poured out. That's what Jesus said. It will be just like this. I will stand with what Jesus said. That is what the early church fathers said also. They also stood with what Jesus said and what Paul said and what John said. I hope this has helped you understand the truth of history and of the scriptures. God bless you and Maranatha. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.